Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Lance from Nerfist TV. Today we're going to be doing this green screening. We're going to discuss it and figure out if you want to do it, how to do it cheaply, or at least not break the bank when you're doing it. There are various reasons why you would want to do green screening. If you're like me and you have limited space and you want to make your background just a little bit more interesting for your viewers, that's one reason. And that's also the reason that I do it. Or maybe you want to take your viewers to somewhere else, somewhere more interesting uh, while discussing a subject. Or maybe you're a gamer and you do live streaming and this is obviously the better way to do it. Whatever your reasoning is, there are various ways to do green screening and not all of them will break the bank. The first thing that you need to discuss is do you need a green screen or do you need a blue screen? Now the green screen is basically what I've got here. So it is a nice bright neon, if you want to call it green, that is easy to punch out as long as I don't have a green similar or close to that within what I'm wearing or on my head or whatever the case is. So if you are a game streamer and you happen to be sponsored by a company, we won't mention names, that has green items, as you can see, it's probably not the best idea for you to have a green screen. In that case, it is better to have a blue screen. Now, blue screen is exactly what it sounds like. It is a really bright, deep blue that is easy to punch out. Green screens are obviously the more predominant and are normally cheaper than the blue screens. Okay, so you've now decided that you're going to go for a green screen. Now, when you are doing your green screening, the basics are don't wear anything close to that color. Maybe wear dull colors, grays, blacks, uh, neutral colors, something that's not going to conflict or give you a hard time when you're actually punching out the green screen. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is obviously lighting. Now, in this particular instance, I have two box lights on either side of the green screen, which are just shining onto the green screen. The reason I do this is to lighten up the screen. But the other two lights that I have are studio lights, which are basically just there to light me or whatever subject matter, maybe uh, an item or whatever the case that I'm having a look at. So that's the only reason. So I only have the four lights and these lights are, as far as studio lights go, pretty cheap. They're not uh, super expensive. You can get very expensive LED lighting and uh, they cost a lot more than what these will. I'll put some links in the description below of various lights like these uh, that you can have a look at and see which fits your budget. I'll also put in options for those that have a bit more money and want something a bit more uh, professional. And also the idea is that you always diffuse the lights. You'll notice a lot of people that do green screening or, uh, or stand in front of the camera have a, a circle light that appears in their iris, in their eye, sorry, when they're standing in front of the camera. That's because they have an LED light that fits around the lens, which you can get and it's pretty common and they're not super expensive. It is the quick and easy way to light up a subject. You don't have to have studio lights all over the place. You could use something like that. I personally don't use them because I don't like that effect of having that little circle of light in the eyes. It's, I find it very distracting. Once you've got your lighting sorted out, the next thing is obviously the video capture. Now, with the video capture, it is better the higher bit rate that you can capture. So if you can capture 10 bit, this is better. The reasoning behind this is a thing called banding. So what happens is if you've got different shades of a certain color, there'll be physical little lines of color that'll actually make up that shade from whatever color to whatever color or going across the spectrum, depending on what the, the shade looks like. For instance, if I've got a gray, I go from white to black and I'm shooting an 8-bit, then there is less bands in less steps from when it goes from the white to the black. When I'm shooting in 10 bit, there is considerably more of those steps. Now, for when you're shooting in a green screen, what this does is it makes the parts around me 
or your subject a lot smoother and a lot easier to punch out because there's a lot more to work with. If my green screen is not totally perfect, uh, then I still have something to work with in post-production. I can actually get a lot better of a cutout because I've shot in a higher bitrate. So that's something to bear in mind. If you have a camera that's capable of shooting 10 bit, go with that straight away if you're doing green screening. If you're not doing green screening, that's not as important so that you can drop it down to some 8-bit. In my particular case, I use the Panasonic GH5, which is able to shoot 10-bit internally, which I use only when I'm sitting in front of a green screen. Otherwise, I just use 8-bit, 60 frames a second, and I'm quite happy shooting that in everything else. The other thing that you might want to try and do is if you have the facility to shoot in log, which basically gives you a lot flatter of a color profile and allows you more wiggle room, as it were, when you're in post-production again, to actually punch out the colors exactly the way you want to because you now have more of the blacks to work with and more of the whites. Uh, I'm not gonna go into detailed description of how that all works. Just know that if you have the facility to shoot log, it's probably better. If you're going to do post-production on the video that you got in front of your green screen, then that's the way to go. If you're game streaming, then you wouldn't shoot log. You wouldn't probably need to shoot 10 bit, although it would still be better. Then you would use the software, whether it's OBS or XSplit or whatever the case is, to actually punch out the chroma key. Uh, in other words, take away the green screen. And as long as you've got your decent lighting and a decent distance away from the screen, you're gonna get yourself a nice, clean, crisp image. Okay, so once you've brought your footage into, in this case, I'm using Final Cut. This will obviously only apply to footage that you have recorded specifically to edit afterwards and then um, put out to whatever a client or uh, YouTube or wherever you're doing. So I'm just going to quickly go over how to enhance the green screen footage that you've now taken. In my case, I've used the GH5 footage. So the first thing I'll do once I brought it in and synchronized my sound is I'm going to select the footage and I'm going to go over to my information over here and I'm going to use extended and I'm just going to apply a vlog LUT to that footage so that it gets a, a general color profile. I'm then going to physically switch to the color and effects workflow. Okay, so the idea here is that you want to enhance the green of your footage so that you can then punch it out a lot easier. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to get the green more green, uh, basically I'll go over here and I'm going to go and add some hue and saturation curves. I'm going to first of all use a hue versus hue. I'm going to select the green and then you'll notice over the left hand side here I want to basically move that line closer to directly over the green. So I'm going to play with this until you see that that line is directly on the green. You'll notice that their green has now become a bit more enhanced. I'm then going to use the hue versus saturation. If it'll actually click, I'm going to select some again. This time I'm actually going to punch the green a bit. So you'll see over here on the left hand side that line is now more grown towards the green. Basically, we're making this green more green, allowing us to edit it a lot more effectively once we do the green screen filter. Okay, I'm now going to go back to my default workspace. And I'm now going to go to my color and effects and I'm going to go to keying and actually add, excuse me, add the key on it. I see we seem to have got ourselves a pretty decent key there. Now what you want to do to enhance it 
is go to the actual key properties and click over here to convert it to black and white you'll be able to see better if there's any problems you see we've got a little bit of bleed over here which is quite easily changed by bringing down the whites a bit and there you go we seem to have a quite a decent key we'll just scroll through here a bit just to make sure that there's nothing popping out that we're not aware of yeah that's a pretty decent key you can then obviously go back there now is when you would actually drop a background in and uh, you know you'd be able to see the background a lot better so that's pretty much what i would do on a general green screen that i've used it can use a little bit of tweaking you'll see under the arm if i go over to there you'll see under the arm over here there's a little bit of white bleed on there but that type of thing is not going to be very noticeable once you've actually put a background in there okay so in this scenario we brought our green screen footage into luma fusion on the ipad and as you can see over here it does not like the 10 bit footage very much although it seems to still use it quite okay so we'll go over to first of all i have under the LUTs i have a generalized vlog LUT which we'll put onto that footage then we'll go over to color correction and we'll try and do pretty much what we did the last time but in final cut so we'll pull up the saturation a little bit really we're just trying to get that green more green and we'll actually pull the green up as well uh, preferably don't want my face starting to get a green tinge to it so okay i think we'll leave it at that now what we'll do is we'll go to the kia and we will select uh, yeah the green screen one never works first time around let me select a blue screen then we can take the picker and go and pick our color uh, which hopefully is that and it is exactly the same so what we'll do is now start playing with these sliders and settings to try and actually get back well me yeah that's terrible unfortunately lumafusion doesn't have the greatest tools for dealing with something like this you see there's still over here there's that flicker of the green screen we'll have to do some more adjusting there maybe pull that up a bit now we're still getting the flicker See the saturation range now you see there it looks better but i think we're still losing a bit of our face and well actually that's not too bad i don't see too much green flicker happening there okay so basically that's what we would do there as you can see it does use the 10 bit file however it is seriously not happy about it and also there is if you go through the footage you'll notice that there is still a bit of breaking up so you really need to fine tune it a lot more in something like luma fusion but the footage is still pretty good considering the lighting and all of that type of thing so 
I'm fairly happy with that. There you go. In the jungle. Now let's discuss the actual green screens themselves. The green screen that you, I am using here is basically just a very big material screen, uh, green obviously, and a bar that runs across the two at the top with two pedestals on either side. That's it. It's a kit. I bought it all together. There are various, um, I wouldn't call them mobile, but more maneuverable green screens, which fold away to next to nothing. I know Algota does one. I'll put a link in that as well, so that you can have a look at it. Basically what it is, is a bar that you put on the ground and you pull up a screen and you click it into place and away you go. These screens range between oh, 150 to 180 euros. So they're not cheap, but they are quite a space saving way to do it. In fact, I'm thinking about replacing this lot with something like the Elgato so that I can just move it around uh, depending on where I'm sitting. If you're a student and you're in a dorm room or you're at home and you've only got your bedroom or whatever the case is, then maybe one of these mobile ones are good. You pull them out, open the screen, do your streaming, close it, slip it back under your bed and you don't have this big green screen sitting permanently in your room. I think that's pretty much it as far as a quick introduction to green screening. I hope you found this helpful in some way. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell so that we get notifications through to you. Hopefully YouTube does that occasionally. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.